Hello, and welcome back to more stories from Sturchley Library. My name is Sharon, and I'm going to be sharing with you a story about a magical cooking pot. Can you imagine that if you had a pot or a pan and you said some magical words, you could get any food that you loved cooked in it? It would appear poof, just like that. I'm wondering. What would be your favorite dish if you had a magical cooking pot? Well, let's find out in the story of the magical porridge pot. There was once a little girl whose name was Sadie. She had bright coppery curls, bright blue eyes, and she was always smiling. She always saw the goodness in everyone and she had a good, kind heart. She lived with her mother, who was a tall, thin woman, a widow, who always had a worried look on her face. And together, they lived in a tall, skinny house with two floors that were joined on to other skinny houses that formed a square around a courtyard. Well, everyone who lived in these tall skinny houses around that courtyard were very very poor they all took whatever work they could find to pay the bills put food on the table clothes on their back and keep the roof over their head and sadie's mother took in what work she could laundry sewing up holes and repairs at other people's clothing like shirts and coats and trousers. She'd knit furiously scarves and shawls, whatever she could do to sell so that they could pay their bills and put food on the table. But sometimes it was not even enough. And often Sadie and her mother would go to bed at night with those grumbling noises being made in their stomach and feeling very, very hungry. Well, one day, Sadie was sitting on the doorstep, overlooking the street. And it was a hot, hot day, one of those hot, steamy days. And she was looking up at the sun above, shining bright in the sky with its rays spread right across. And she was feeling a little bit sad that she wished with all her heart, looking up at the sun, that their lives could change, that they could be lucky. And something good happened to her that day. For coming down the road towards the tall skinny houses on the street where Sadie lived, was one of the neighbors, an old wise woman, Mrs. Jones, who had been at the marketplace all day long, selling her carpets and selling all the things that she'd woven, shawls, scarves, and sweaters. And it was hot that day. And she hadn't sold a great deal. And she had things, garments tucked under her arms. She had bags in her hands, and it was heavy. And she was a rather plump lady, and she moved very, very slowly. But the sun was hot, high up in the sky, and her face was quite red, and she had little dribbles of sweat trickling down her face. And every so often, oh, she'd stop. She'd sigh as she'd put her bags down on the ground, and she'd take a cloth out from her pocket of her dress, and she'd mop her head and think, oh. I do hope I can get home soon. It is so, so hot. Well, Sadie heard a sigh, and she looked in the direction of where Mrs. Jones was coming from. Oh, well, Sadie had this kind heart, and she always loved going to visit Mrs. Jones. So she got up from the step, and she ran up to her. And she looked into Mrs. Jones's eyes and said, Oh, can I help you, Mrs. Jones? It's awfully hot. Are those bags really heavy? And Mrs. Jones looked down at Sadie and she smiled. Oh, Sadie, love. Oh, yes, I am hot as you can see. 
goodness me. And you'd be ever so helpful if you could help me. Thank you so much. Here, take these bags. Sadie took them, and she took some of the garments that Mrs. Jones had had under her arms, and together they walked down the road towards the little alleyway, which led up to the courtyard, towards the tall, skinny houses which framed the courtyard where they all lived. Once they got into the coolness of the alleyway, oh, they felt so much better. And then they came out of the alleyway, walked across the courtyard, and straight into the kitchen of Mrs. Jones's house. Oh, Sadie used to love to visit Mrs. Jones, for her kitchen would always smell of herbs and spices. Often there were racks up from the ceiling of herbs drying, or that wonderful shelf against the wall, which were filled with blue and green and clear glass bottles that were filled with spices or herbs or pickled fruits and vegetables. Sadie used to love to go in there. When they entered the kitchen, they immediately felt the coolness. And Mrs. Jones said, Now, Sadie dear, put the bags down there by the stove and come and sit at the kitchen table. You've such, such a lovely, good, kind heart. I have a little present for you. <gasps> Sadie did as she was told. She sat down by the kitchen table. She never had many gifts given to her, and she was so excited. What did Mrs. Jones, what was she going to give her? She saw Mrs. Jones turn her back to her and reach up, up on the shelves next to a row of blue glass bottles. And she brought down a pot, a black iron pot, and put it in front of Sadie on the table. Well, it had a lid to it, and it was shaped like a football, and had three little legs supporting it. And Sadie looked at that pot. Well, it was lovely to be given a present, but she knew at home they had no food to cook in that little pot. And Mrs. Jones saw that look of disappointment on Sadie's face. And she smiled again. Oh, Sadie, love, she said, this is no ordinary pot. This is a magical porridge pot. Really, said Sadie. Her eyes were wide now. What does it do? Well, just you watch and listen. Listen carefully to the magic words. So Sadie sat very still in the chair. While Mrs. Jones slowly raised her hands, she clapped them and said, cook, little pot, cook. And Sadie's eyes became even bigger and her mouth dropped open when the little pot began to rack it and began to roll on those three legs faster and faster and faster. And Sadie heard inside that sound of glub, glub, bubble, pop, bubble, pop, glub, glub, bubble, pop, glub, glub. Bubble pop! And Mrs. Jones again clapped her hands and said the magical words Stop, little pot, stop! And the pot stopped cooking. But in that kitchen, it was filled with the most delicious aroma of creamy golden porridge. And Sadie could feel her mouth starting to water, her stomach starting to make those funny, funny little noises for she hadn't eaten for a day or two. And she was very, very, very hungry. And Mrs. Jones again smiled at her and said, go and lift the lid, Sadie love. Go and look at what is cooked for you. And Sadie reached over from where she was sitting and she carefully lifted up the lid from the pot and looked inside. Oh! <gasps> She smelt it. Oh, it looked delicious. She could just see at the top there was golden, creamy porridge gently bubbling away. Mrs. Jones gave her a spoon, and Sadie dived right in, and she ate, 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 and she ate. 
until she'd cleared up every scrap of porridge from that pot. She looked up at Mrs. Jones. Thank you so much. This is a wonderful present. Oh, I can hardly wait to show my mother. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. Thank you. It's all right, Sadie, love. And you go run along now. Go on. Sadie get, grabbed hold of the pot. She smiled again at Mrs. Jones, and then she ran out through the door, across the courtyard, into her own house, where she found her mother sat by the fire, looking very sour, and she was busy sewing some hole in some pair of trousers. As soon as Sadie ran into the kitchen, ran into the room, her mother looked up and saw her holding that pot. Sadie put it on the table and she said, look what Mrs. Jones gave me, mother. Isn't it wonderful? And her mother, oh, Sadie, love, what are we going to do with that pot? We've got nothing to cook it, well, to cook inside it. Tell you what you can do, love. If you go down to the market, you could sell it and buy some meat for tonight's dinner. What do you say? Oh, said Sadie, I can't do that, mother. No, this is a magical porridge pot. Just you sit there and watch and listen. And her mother did as she was told. And Sadie, who put the pot on the kitchen table, clapped her hands and said, cook, little pot, cook. And Sadie's mother's became, eyes became wide and her mouth dropped open as the little pot began to shake. And then it started to roll around on those three legs. And inside, Sadie's mother could hear the glub, glub, bubble, pop, bubble, pop, glub, glub, bubble, pop, bubble, pop. And as soon as it reached the top, the porridge was cooking. Sadie clapped her hands and went, stop, little pot, stop. And the pot stopped cooking. And Sadie lifted the lid and her mother got up from the chair and she looked down. She could see it was filled right up to the top with creamy golden porridge that was still simmering away. And that night, Sadie and her mother went to bed with smiles on their faces and their stomach full. And they never, ever were hungry ever again. And that's the story of the magical cooking pot. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll be back again to share another story at Sturgley Library. Thank you for listening.